Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. This will be our second video on The Who. We're going to be talking about a quick one. With me is Tim. Howdy. And Heimster? That's me. I'm going to get it. I got it right. You did. All right, he's our special guest. Colquitt is out. So we got somebody who knows what they're doing, what they're talking about. So we can talk about a quick one. Again, here we go with this uh, U.S. got a different release. So what's the first thing we notice here is that the U.S. release is not called a quick one. It's called Happy Jack. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, because Happy Jack was actually the first uh, single that broke in America. So um, they threw that on the American release, you know, to try to move records. Our first big red, big hit record in the states. I do, I do think like the U.S. got screwed on the generation split, but I think we got the better deal on this one. Interesting. I like Happy Jack better than Heat Wave. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? You know, so. I, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, Happy Jack is better than Heat Wave, but there's a better version of Heat Wave out there. That's, uh, of yeah, it's pretty awesome. But, um, but yeah, we'll get there to, on a different album. So I mentioned, oh, is that Heat Wave is on this one, right? Yeah, yes, it's on yes, the yes it is. One. So yeah, so I, as I mentioned, I grew up in Albany, um, and we had um, we had a music store, um, and, the, and the Who played. Um, this is uh, according to legend. They played at a place called the Palace Theater in downtown Albany, and so they were in a music store, and um, this was before they were, they really had a big name. And and the the proprietor said, "Hey, aren't you guys the Who or something?" And Townsend said, "No, we're bloody Martha Reeves and the Vandellas." You know. <laughs> In his 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 classic, you know, impudent response. Um, but anyway, that's that's my Albany connection to the Who. There you go. Um, so yeah, before we get into the album, they are breaking into America. This is uh, around the time as the Monterey Pop Festival, where both the Who and Hendrix uh, flipped a coin to see who would go on first and do the most destruction, <laughs> and. Um, you know, that's the, of course, infamous show where Jimmy set the guitar on fire. And uh, so, you know, you decide who won. Um, but yeah, uh, getting to the album, uh, another fun thing is, uh, of course, mu the way music publishing works is you don't make money unless you write the song. So in an effort to get everybody in the band some money, and I think as a way Pete kind of was going to like assert dominance ago, I'm the main songwriter here. Let's see what you got. Um, pull, pull everybody got Bobby. to write a couple songs. Yeah. And yeah, I think clearly Entwistle uh, uh, wins the competition. Both of his entries here are just absolute classics. They are indeed. Um, Roger's song on here I've always found really interesting. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a fun song. Um, it's certainly not the best on the album, but he really is. It almost sounds like a plea for everybody to just follow what he's doing. Let him be the leader of the band. He definitely um, shows his chops as a, as a songwriter. And I think, I think Townsend squelched him out of that role pretty early on. It's not, it's, it's actually a very good song. Sure. It is. Um, is it as good as I need you? Keith Moon's main contribution here i'm not sure so um, then, i think that song's super catchy um there's a weird weird impotence going on in the fidelity right but right. if you can get past that um yeah, it's a really catchy song um so the i need you apparently moon was was paranoid that the beatles were talking about him behind his back <laughs> and um <laughs> You know, you, what, what's the what's the lyric um, uh, that you walk to them, they talk out loud, they come to you in any crowd, 
please talk to me again. And there's a there's an uh, like a middle portion where you hear like a, some sort of conversation going on in the song. And um, Entwistle accuses Moon, apparently, of of uh, doing an imitation of John Lennon during that little mock conversational portion where you really can't understand what they're saying. Um, but but I think uh, it was confirmed later on that he was doing an imitation of John Lennon. That's mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then Cobb's Webs and Strange, his other one, it's just a fun little instrumental. Uh, I think it fits his personality. And yeah, it's a nice little, like, here's a songwriting credit. Right. Um, uh, we got to talk about Boris the Spider, of course. Did John Entwistle just invent death metal? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, say more about that. I love that song, though. Yeah, I mean, who who was doing the growly vocals before Ant Whistle? Right. Um, it's so goofy, but like, it's so <laughs> surprisingly deep musically. It's just the vocal delivery yeah. is insane. The, the the tempo change, like the whole song is just amazing. Yeah, the progressions are amazing. Apparently, he wrote it um, after a night drinking with Bill Wyman of the Stones. Well, Whiskey Man's nearly, he's with me nearly all the time. Nearly all the time. <laughs> right. Now, there's, um, a, there's a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Even that they actually did a song called Jekyll and Hyde, but Whiskey Man also reflects yeah. the same type of thing, which is thematically something you hear a lot in, their, in, 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 this, in this period, let's say 65, um, up until Tommy, is very introspective stuff. You know, sort of, it's, well, it's, not, it's not just about girls and 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 the, the the type of light material that you're getting out of british invasion music it's about it's about it's guy stuff it's mu- guy oriented music um and um and it's about problems right it's about it's it's sort of about social um not fitting in let's say it's mm. about being a square peg yeah uh, yeah, it is. Um, there's a lot of frustration in a lot of this discography. Yeah. Um, and it's reflected very well. Um, but yeah, uh, getting back to where I was here real quick. Um, so yeah, we everybody contributes songs here. Right. But Pete kind of does outshine them all with his two contributions. Um, you mentioned earlier, So Sad About Us. It's right. a classic song. It is. But not enough people talk about the title track. A quick one while he's away. Oh is the first attempt at a mini opera that's right um my fate it's a great song the story is fun all the sections are great my favorite part about that is um they heard a cello part but couldn't like afford somebody to come in to do it so they just started saying cello 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 that's right that's hilarious yeah it's that's thinking on your feet um but yeah, there's uh, there's a weird edit in the studio version that always throws me. Um, yeah, I noticed that right before you hear the steam engine sound. Yeah, it's yeah, and then you, and then it's very clearly a different take. Um, there is uh, this was the song they did on the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. Right. That if you get that whole performance, it's. It's, it's incredible probably, what they're able to do in that 10 it, minutes. It really is probably one of their best filmed live performances uh, of that era or of any era of the band. I, 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 I simply can't get sick of watching the Rolling Stone um, Rock and Roll Circus performance. It is, And it's one of the reasons, apparently, that the Stones shelved the entire program was because the Who outshined yeah, them Yeah, I, I saw that too. Yeah, it's one of Brian Jones's last performances. Yeah. You can tell he's not doing well. The whole band looks really lethargic and well, they sick. They came off a tour and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, the Who are about to hit their peak. I'm gonna, Very I'm nice. gonna argue, I'm gonna argue with you in a couple albums about their best uh, recorded live performance. No, no, I know where um, you're going with this. Yeah, <laughs> I know where you're headed. I see it. Yeah, um, but you're but you're you're not wrong about this period and even before. Like you mentioned, the railway earlier, and then Rock, Rolling Stones, Rock and Roll Circus, a um, lot of TV clips. Well, um, I think I think the all the, one of the really nice things about 
the rock and roll circus performance of this song is that it's a multi-camera um, um, uh, recording. Um, and and I, it looks like it might be 35 millimeter um, where you have this very nice remaster of it on the new Kids Are All Right DVD. Um, and they're just clicking as a band. And you've got this, this stagehand pouring water down from the, from the catwalk onto Moon's <laughs> snare. And the drama of it is really incredible. It's just so unexpected. Suddenly there's just water flying everywhere and it's jubilant. The colors, it's just it's such a great recording. It's very psychedelic 60s. Yes. Right. Yeah, that album cover is pretty groovy. <laughs> Indeed. My Molly notes for Cobweb and Strange just says bat shit crazy good. Right. That's all it says. It's Keith Moon in a song right there, right? <laughs> yeah, Boris saw... the Spider, Whiskey Man, like the two men dressed in white collected me two days ago. They said there's only room for one and Whiskey Man can't go. Like that that's some genius lyrics. It, it's some pretty heavy duty struggle with alcohol stuff. Yeah. You know, it's real. It's real stuff. And a quick um, one, like you said, yeah, it's. I mean, to this day, there's bands that play pay homage to this. Like, yeah, Green Day has a great version of it yeah, on uh, American Idiot. I think they usually sound check their uh, their live. Oh, shows is that right? With playing a quick one. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I never knew that. Yeah, that's it's a great song. Definitely check out the BBC version. Um, right. That's a great one as well. It is. It's very it's it's very contained in, in comparison. You know, they're very careful about it in a way. I guess they don't want to destroy the BBC studio. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Right. There are so many different versions of these records. It was insane putting this together. Like Yes, indeed. Even it's... my generation, like Spotify has like three different versions and I just okay. I clicked with the song My Generation on each one and it sounded like completely different. Tone wise, recording wise, instrument like it's crazy how much this band put out in such a you know, time. I I remember an, an interview with Townsend. Um, it was for Rockline, um, and uh, he was talking about um, re releases and all of this stuff. And he put it very succinctly. He said, "There's a whole future in the past of the Who," um, and and he was talking about the you know, referencing exactly what you're talking about there, that there are just so many of these various different recordings and, and versions, um, which you get a taste of in the re-releases too. You get a sense of the different takes, different production approaches and so forth. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to this band for like just even every every single album, there's a lot to just one album. Yes, very true. <laughs> And the, the artwork is really fun, too, on this one. Yeah, it's not my favorite one, but... It's not your favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're going to get to that one next. <laughs> no, no. No, there you I mean, go. Come on, what's more punk rock than that? Like, that's just... That's true. That is true. All right. Um, we got anything else to add about a quick one? I don't think so. It was a oh. quick one. Seeds are planting. We're about to get really ambitious with the, the concepts and the songwriting. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's about to get deep here in the next one. So for me, I just the songwriting alone, Boris the Spider, a quick one, you know, Whiskey Man. It's they've grown so more. sad about us, yeah. It's grown more than the first one to, for me. Like I, I would go back to this one before I'd go back to the first one. Interesting. Yeah, for sure. I, I would totally agree. I would totally agree. It would be here. Yeah, sounds like we're unanimous. Oh, this rarely happens. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to divulge here real soon. Though. We will at some point, <laughs> I'm sure. Um. So, yeah, that was a quick one. 
Um, we'll be doing the Who Sell Out next, which it's going to be some hot takes on that one. Um, what is it, Tim? Uh, no, I'm just I'm just smiling because I don't know if I'm going to have hot takes as well. So curious to see if they're the same hot take. Yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. Subscribe. And you can find out too. <laughs> you know, for as a as a postscript on on um, a quick one, you know, I think a good there's a good description of how it came about, how particular how the how the final track, how the title track came about um, in the Kids Are Alright film. Uh, where Townsend is talking about the genesis of that, where they had a few minutes left yep. on the album to fill. Um, and, and Kit Lambert said, why don't you write something linear, something with continuity? Why don't you write a 10-minute song? And Townsend said, you, you can't write a 10-minute song. Rock songs are 2 minutes 50. That's the tradition. Um, and, and they go through this whole machination, and Lambert says, all right, well, why don't you write a 10 minute story made up of two minute 50 songs, uh, which is essentially what, what that is. And it's the, it's the birth pangs of the rock opera or as Tommy or as, uh, as Townsend called it on stage, Tommy's parents. Yeah. And in 1966, I mean, well, even in 2024, it, it's, it's a pretty epic song. I mean, it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty ambitious. Yeah, it's, it is ambitious. It's out there, man. And they kind it's of pull it off. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get to Tommy here real soon. Tell me. <laughs> all right, well, with that, stick around, like, subscribe, do all the stuff you kids do on The YouTube. clicky things. The clicky all things. The things the kids do. <laughs> Be safe and make good decisions. Oh, this is so